Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to a garden DIY project. So today we are starting unexpectedly because it rained on the paver patio. So I have this adorable little bistro set that my mom and brother got me for my birthday last year. And you may or may not be able to see, but I have a whole bunch of gray pavers that I bought on the spring sale this year for a paper patio for under this set. I also went ahead and splurged and finally got the umbrella of my dreams because your girl needs a little shade here until my big Jane Magnolia tree gets bigger. I've been wanting this. It was literally on my mood board for this space for like two years now. So I'm very excited. Um, but we're going to move this all out of the way. We're going to start on the patio. So in order to put the pavers down here, I need to level the ground. I need to dig down far enough to put the pavers in without it being a noticeable step up. I will be continuing on the border around behind me to the edge of the shed so that the entire area can be mulched like the area y'all are in. So we are going to be digging down, leveling the space, tamping it down really good, putting down a base of paper sand, putting some landscape fabric down, putting the pavers down, mulching the area, and then replacing our table and chairs. So ideally, this is a six and a half foot wide umbrella. Ideally, I'd like the patio itself to be at least seven or eight feet wide. So there's enough space to pull back your chair and sit. But when I did my calculations for a round patio, said I needed 198 pavers for a six foot square or a six foot circle, which was about the extent of my budget for this year. So we'll be doing a six foot circle paver patio and I will be doing an overall nine foot area. That way next year when I have a bit more budget, I can clear the mulch out and do another ring or two, another foot around of pavers. You don't necessarily have to do it all at once, although it will probably be easier to do it all at once. Um, it's something that I can expand when I have the budget. For today, we're just gonna get started marking off the area. I have a shovel and I have a rake. We're gonna see kind of what's easier to uh, start on the ground. And we're just gonna see how far I can get. My mom and brother are going to be helping me with this project next week. So uh, I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to do without their help, but since it rains so much, we're gonna try.
All right, y'all. Sitting on one of the chairs. The camera died. I have to go in and plug it in, but we finished the circle. I am literally soaked. <laughs> partly because it did start raining halfway through, which actually helped, and partly just because it is humid as heck out here with the rain. But I got the full nine foot circle dug and we will see. I still need to tamp it down, level it a little bit and see if we need to dig any more. But I did put a paver in and they are level with the surface-ish. Again, we're still gonna put some paver sand, some landscape fabric and the pavers surrounding them with mulch. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly level um, and it doesn't have to be perfectly the right height, but we want to get pretty close. Either way, the end of day one is finished. I'm going to go take a shower and I will see y'all for the next step. All right, y'all, we are on not day two, day three. So yesterday, mom and I came out to work on the circle and honestly, we just did not film. It was the end of the day. We had so much to do. We were running late. We had full mosquito spray on because it was like seven o'clock at night. We just got done what we could get done. So let me show you what we did yesterday and we will get started today on the second part of what we're doing. Yesterday, we went ahead and we took this long stick behind mom. We smoothed out the whole circle. We made sure it was level it is sloping slightly downhill because we want it to drain um and we made sure there was no low spots for water to that, settle it yes it's never going to be perfectly level we because i just i live on a hill it's a big problem then we used the tamper to tamp down the whole circle and we started laying landscape fabric and we, ran out. we were going to finish but we ran out <laughs> we're very good planners you might notice two new piles of brick though, and that's because, tell them mom. I scored a major, major free set of paver bricks right here. And that's just one load. Yep. We have another load up front. For mom's house. For my house, plus two more loads to go pick up. So one of mom's friends is getting rid of her entire brick paver courtyard. courtyard and putting in a different courtyard and said we could come take as many bricks as we wanted. And as you know, mom said, challenge accepted. I will take every single brick you have. Oh, so this is 400 bricks and they are two different sizes, square and rectangular, but they're pavers, not bricks. These are bricks. So we're not sure. We may return these now that we have these, or I may use them for a different project. Um, but now that we have the free bricks, we're going to go ahead and do the full nine foot circle instead of leaving half for next year. So today we are finishing putting down the landscape fabric. We got some paver sand or actually play sand because we talked to David at Marvin's. He always has great advice for us. He said if this is not going to be a permanent solution, he would normally suggest putting down like two inches of pea gravel and then two inches of paper-based sand. Um, he said for something like this, the finer the sand, the harder it is to keep your bricks in place. He would use play sand and he would use about six bags and go from there. So that is what we're gonna try. I'm not sure if the six bags are supposed to be the whole base and then we should have bought some to go in between the bricks or if we need three bags for the base and three bags for in between that seems really low but we're just gonna start putting it out and seeing so landscape fabric play sand pavers my brother is here to help us with the paver circles because mom and i are a uh, we're artistic we're not very Fly on. Good at exact patterns, and I want this to be really flat oh, yeah. and level and symmetrical. I wasn't allowed to do my own paper. So yeah. I'm going to put in a little bit of footage right here of getting these bricks from Miss Marilyn, and we're going to keep going on the landscape fabric.
We got all of these bricks this morning. And now we're picking up another load. Oh. Day two of the Great Bit Brick Project. All right, y'all, it is 4.30. We've been out here for most of the day. We did have to take a round of bricks back to mom's house. You can see Biddy is now helping and Will has gone home. We got so much done. And we, what was it, one or two when we left for your house, mom? Somewhere around there. So I think it took about four hours to get the sand down, the landscape fabric, put the bricks in place and sweep the sand in between them honestly isn't that bad huh bitty bitty so you can see that we are now putting black edging around the whole patio it's going to connect this area to the raised bed so the whole area is complete and fill it in with mulch i think you're making a little angular there mom it was a curve and now it's like a it will be cool so Biddy is very excited. We're gonna go ahead, get the uh, edging in and the mulch done. I've got one, two, three pots that are gonna kinda go in this spot. And we're gonna connect those to drip. When my brother moved this pot for me, he accidentally took the tree half out. So I guess we'll replant the tree. And they're gonna sit on this portion of the patio. Also, I'm going to start moving the free bricks. So they are, uh, just put away until we need more of them because I don't have another huge brick project to do today. And we will be done 
for with this project for the day and with this project two things so let's get her done because we're done but oh it looks so good with the umbrella the bricks you can see we put the umbrella stand in the middle then we did a row of little bricks little bricks one big one little two big one little three bigs one little all big and it needed one little like a keystone right there and then all big so the only difference is there's a few spots where the pattern didn't work and so what my brother did was he ended up with this little edge of the pattern so one two three single bricks here and we filled it in that way to make it symmetrical now will mom just said he's will my brother is a math teacher for high school he could teach college age math he is i mean my dad's an aeronautical engineer my brother could be he he sees patterns like nobody's business and it's not that you need that in order to lay a brick paver patio but it is is the reason we defer to all pattern related things to him and he made it very level and it looks really nice it feels very sturdy to walk on so thanks will i'm gonna go ahead and put y'all on fast forward and finish her up because we're tired of working You want to put in the polymer, is that what it's called? Polymer. polymer sand in between or something that is going to really cement the bricks in place. But this clay sand will hold the bricks in place. They're actually very sturdy for a long time. I will probably have to add another bag or two as time kind of washes it away or the wind blows some away since it's not in place or solid or fixed <laughs> in any way. Uh, Biddy really likes the patio. Yay, Biddy. She's been sitting on it all morning. I had to go get three extra bags of mulch to finish up the mulch around the area. Um, but I think it looks really good. I really like the pink umbrella. I really like the pavers. I'm actually really happy with these over the ones I'd originally purchased, which makes sense. Those were 25 cents. These would have been a dollar fifty-eight. They're just they're better bricks. Much nicer pavers. So I'm very happy. I'm gonna bring y'all in for a close-up look at how it is finished. And we will move on to the next project. But buttoning this up, we still have to take this pile back to the store since we're not using it. Uh, is one of the last big pieces of the project pie around this area. The only thing I have left to do is replace the pea gravel up top, and then it's just planting things from year to year or adding small pieces or pots. You know, I've got plants to plant, plant in these two pots. I may add another, oh, there's Monica. Another piece here and there, but this is the last, like, big hardscape piece. We are planning to build a cutting bench on the other side of the shed, but I'm going to say that's a big hardscape piece because it's not ground, you know, so there's a straight cat in our neighborhood that loves my house. She's so sweet. She won't let me near her. She just came and laid like just out of reach, 20 yards away. Biddy said, I love cats. Let me go play with her. Biddy was raised by my lily cat and she thinks she's a cat. All right, I'm going to bring y'all in for a final look. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you are building your own paper patio, let us know how it goes. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. Bye, y'all.
because she is. Betty loves being on camera. baby. I did add with the extra bricks instead of putting them in a pile like this little patio area here for my milk jugs. More of a holding area. They may or may not all stay there over time. But I love having this right off all of my raised beds. Here's the pea gravel I got to finish. And I can come out of the shed, take a break.